Hearing on securing our freight and transit rail sectors against Chinese state-owned enterprises. My name is John Adams, and I am a 30-year veteran of the U.S. Army and president of Guardian, Guardian 6 Consulting. We depend upon the freight rail system to provide safe, reliable, and effective transportation for our defense and homeland security infrastructure. Our national survival depends upon these rail links to, to transport, for example, military equipment, hazardous waste, toxic substances, and the range of products and commodities are, that support our entire economy. U.S. freight rail is a strategic asset, the health and integrity upon which our armed forces rely. Today, I would like to draw the committee's attention to China's strategic targeting of the U.S. rail manufacturing sector with aggressive, strategic, and anti-competitive actions that threaten to turn this system from a bedrock strategic asset into a potentially crippling vulnerability. These efforts are being driven by a Chinese SOE called the China Railway Rolling Stock Corporation, a massive conglomerate wholly controlled by the Chinese government as part of coordinated efforts to advance Chinese industrial policy, such as Made in China 2025. So what are some of the tactics that CRC uses to infiltrate our rail industry? First, they have unlimited resources since they are backed by the Chinese government. They can easily underbid their competitors. In just the last five years, CRRC's underbidding has allowed them to establish rail assembly operations for transit rail cars in two states, along with research and bidding operations in several others. Emboldened with contract victories in four cities, CRRC continues to target other U.S. cities, including our nation's capital, where the request for proposal includes video surveillance, monitoring and diagnostics, data interfaces, and automatic train control systems that are susceptible to cyber attacks. Whomever is selected to supply rail cars for WMATA will become a partner in the day-to-day -day operations of a metro system whose stops include the Pentagon and the Capitol, as well as unfettered access to our nation's tunnels and underground infrastructure. The prospect of the Chinese government using these trains for intelligence gathering is alarming. Chinese built-in surveillance cameras could track the movements and routines of passengers searching for high-value targets from whom intelligence officials could vacuum data using the train's built-in Wi-Fi systems. China already boasts of using the latest advances in artificial intelligence and facial recognition technology, creating a very real chance that they have the capacity and interest in doing so here in the United States. Even more alarming is that CRRC can easily pivot into freight rail assembly, a subsector of rail that does not benefit from the same Buy America protections as transit rail. Concerns about CRRC's transition into freight rail manufacturing are best illustrated by the recent experiences of third country markets like Australia, whose freight rail manufacturing sector, CRC, decimated in less than 10 years. The Department of Defense has a long-standing reliance on freight rail. Most of the military's heavy and track vehicles are transported by freight rail, meaning that freight rail runs through every military base in the United States. Freight Rail is also core to the U.S. Transportation Command, DOD's Global Defense Transportation System, coordinating transportation assets around the world. The national security concerns related to CRC cannot be underestimated. Chinese intelligence awareness of U.S. rail logistical movements could provide China with a destabilizing strategic and economic competitive edge. And of course, Chinese access to U.S. freight rail also means that the risk of malicious incursions into our rail infrastructure, including those carried out by terrorists, would become much more difficult for U.S. operators to detect or counter. While Congress has recognized and taken steps to address similar threats to products such as computer chips and cellular technology, it is equally important that policymakers enact legislation to stop immediately the scope and impact of China's ongoing incursion into an increasingly digitized rail network. I greatly appreciate the committee's interest in addressing these critical issues. We must safeguard our U.S. rail system's health and integrity before we lose it. We owe it to the American people to ensure that the American freight rail sector continues to be a vibrant and secure element of our nation's infrastructure. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify. I look forward to answering your questions. Precisely on time. Uh, thank you.